Alright, now's the time for the kids to come forward. So kids, if you could join me up front here, that would be great. Kids of all ages are welcome. Come on up, guys. It's good to see you. Come on up. Yeah. Good to see you. Come on up. All right, good to see you guys. Well, it is so good to have you all up here today. I need to be honest with you. Today we're talking about spiritual gifts. And as I was thinking about gifts, I ask you to come up here every single Sunday. And as I look into your eyes and as I listen to your comments and I see you growing into the people that God wants you to be, I just need you to know that I think you're all very gifted. In fact, I was doing some research on the sermon, and I found out that there's this new school in upstate New York for gifted youngsters. Can we see that? And at this school, they bring gifted youngsters from all over the world to help them learn about their gifts. So I asked the professor of that school to come and visit with us this morning. He couldn't make it today, but um, he did come by yesterday to give you a special message. Can we roll that from the professor, please? Good morning. Hello, children. My name is Professor Charles Xavier. You may know me as the leader of the X-Men. I'm sorry I couldn't be with you at worship today because I've been asked to give a lecture on mutation at Oxford University. But your pastor has asked me to consider to allow you to join me and my other students the School for Gifted Youngsters. However, I think Pastor Ben is a bit confused. I'm sensing that happens a lot. <laughs> sure. I have some students at my school with some fantastic abilities, but all of their gifts pale in comparison to the gifts given to the body of Christ, the Church. Through the Holy Spirit, each and every one of you have been given amazing gifts. Perhaps you have been given the gift of service, or perhaps you have the gift of encouragement, and there are many others. But as the Apostle Paul said in his letter to the church in Rome, saying we all have different gifts according to the grace of God has given us. So the task at hand for you is to discover those gifts and then use them to bring glory to God alone. I want to thank you for your interest in my school, but I really think that you are exactly where God wants you to be. Is that it? Is that what you needed? Oh, splendid. Because I think my ride is here. Oh, yes. Hello, Wolverine. How are you? Thank you so much for driving me back to the airport. Could we make a pit stop? I want to get an ice cream cone at a place called the Sugar Bear. Before I leave. Splendid. Fantastic. All right. That's not me. It's totally not me. <laughs> but did you hear what he said? That I was so confused that even though you're all gifted, you're gifted in amazing ways. God wants to use those gifts, not in some far off place right now. He wants you to use your gifts right here at our church, in your schools, and in this community. So we're going to be talking a lot about what it means to be gifted in the Spirit. So good job listening, guys. Here's a piece of candy before you return to your seats. If you attend preschool through first grade, you may head to rest stop with your parents' permission. Everyone else, if you can open up your Bibles to the book of Romans, that we're, we're going to be there today. If you're a guest with us today, thank you so much for being here. We're in the middle of our Spiritual Disciplines series, where we're talking about the importance of those commands in Scripture that help us to be the people that God created us to be. But it's things we have to work at. So things like going to worship, things like prayer, Things like studying scripture, and as we're going to talk about today, things like spiritual gifts. Do you guys find one you like? we got some good ones in there. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. You guys can pick one, and then you can head back, okay? All right, good job. I like that choice. Well done. 
So all month long, we've been talking about these things that the Lord commands us to do. And so as we think about spiritual gifts, we've been using this very helpful book about spiritual disciplines called Think, Act, and Be Like Jesus. And so the key question today, please, Bill, if we can see that, is what gifts and abilities has God given me? And you, and you, and you, in order to serve others. And so the key idea I hope to present is that I know my spiritual gifts and... I use them to fulfill God's purposes. So the first question we need to wrestle with, how? How do you and I know what our spiritual gifts are? And so the author of this book has a, a good idea where imagine you're driving along I-94. We know that there has been tremendous, devastating accidents this winter along I-94. But let's just pretend you're driving along the highway and in the distance you see one of those accidents. You jump out of the vehicle and you want to help. And so the author asked the question, if that was you, what would be your first inclination to help? Would you take leadership and start telling people what we need to do with the accident? Would you listen to someone else that has stood up to be a leader and you then implement what they've told you to do? Or do you forget about everything and you go directly to a person who's injured and you meet their very needs in that time of crisis? And so the author points out that that usually gives you a good idea of what are some of the giftings that the Lord has given you. And as we think about that, the passage we are going to look at today is from the letter that Paul wrote to Rome. Now, unlike many of his other letters, Paul did not start, he did not plant the church in Rome. And he didn't really know them all that well. And so in this letter, he gives very much an overview of some of the spiritual gifts that the Spirit of God has blessed them with. But if you have your Bibles open, it's not up, going to be up on the screen, but he points out a few important things before he gets into a discussion on giftedness, saying, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, for this is your spiritual act of worship. Do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good and pleasing, perfect will. And as the author points out, before we read this chapter, when someone becomes a Christian, God repurposes the innate talents He created in that person at birth to be used to accomplish His purposes through His church. But it is also true that God deposits a spiritual gift or gifts in a person when the Holy Spirit takes up residence in him or her. And so this gift, along with their uniqueness of their personality and the talents given at their birth, are used for a very high and eternal purpose. And so keep that in mind as we read this short passage together. Now starting with verse 3. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body. Each member belongs to all the others. For we all have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophecy, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. And if it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. And so since Paul doesn't know the people of Rome all that well, he begins this important section by pointing out the position for which he's speaking to them on. And we see that word often in this passage, this word grace, and in Greek it's charis. It's this understanding that if you know anything about Paul, he was not always such a very good guy. In fact, his name was Saul, and he was famous for joining the religious leaders of the day to persecute the church. In fact, he was present when Stephen was executed for proclaiming the gospel. And it's out of this fallen, broken, wrong path that the Lord pulled him out of, gave him a new life and a new purpose and all these gifts. But yet, whenever Paul is writing, he has this deep sense of gratitude that he has received undeserved grace and that he speaks with a humility to the people in Rome. 
And he says it's from this position of humility he gives a command to us and to the original church in Rome. Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. What a timely command. We have so many people in our society today that think a little bit too highly of themselves. The best example I could give is American Idol. How many of you have ever seen the television show American Idol? Hopefully everybody. If you've seen that show, at the beginning of the season, each and every season, you have this time of audition where people from all over the world, normally young people, go to different places for the audition. I'm sure you've seen one of these where you have a young person, maybe it's a, a young man, a young woman, and they walk in and they start just kind of strutting their stuff. Oh yeah, I'm going to be the next American Idol. And then, so the host interviews them and says, do you have gifts of singing? Absolutely, I have an amazing gift. And then the parents, oh, do, does your child have a gift? Oh, they have an amazing gift of singing. And then of course we all know what happens. They walk in front of the judges and they open up their mouth and it's painful. It's painful to listen to, it's painful to watch. Clearly, this person does not have the gift of singing, and they have been thinking much, much too highly of themselves. And you can imagine the awkwardness of the judges being like, um, I'm sorry, no, <laughs> you don't have a gift. In fact, someone along the lines, maybe your parents, I'm like, should have told you, you don't have this gifting. Because in our society, people often think too highly of themselves. But instead, Paul says, don't do that. But rather, think of yourself with sober judgment and according to the measure of faith God has given you. And so this is a big problem in our society, especially among young people. None of those young people here today. So we're not talking about the college kids or the teenagers. No, no. But if you've noticed the last few generations of young people, they have a very, very high level of self-esteem of themselves with very low work production, <laughs> right? And it's not just recent generations. I guess back in 06, maybe, maybe, maybe Kevin read this as a mathematician, but, but the world did this mathematical test with something like 10 nations around the world. America was part of it, Korea was part of it, and when the results came out, people were shocked because Korea had very low self-esteem and self-estimation of their math skills, but they scored top marks when the math text was actually graded. Americans, on the other hand, scored top marks for self-esteem, but the bottom of the barrel when it came to actually testing for math. How does that happen? We see. We think oftentimes more highly of ourselves, and instead of using sober judgment, we are susceptible to this thing called self-deception. And so Paul understands that. So before he gets into any talk about gifts, he points that out. And then he uses a common metaphor in Scripture. Just as each one of us has a body and with many members, these members do not all have the same function. So we've got a thumb, we've got a pinky, we've got a knee, we've got a foot. Everything on our bodies has a purpose, except for maybe an appendix, right? I'm not quite sure what the appendix does. But in the same way, like when we have communion and we, and we bring it down here and we talk about how we are the body, each and every one of you are part of this body that we call Red Arrow Ministries. And it's the greater body of the church. And each and every one of you has an important purpose. None of you are appendixes. I promise, none of you are appendixes. You all have an important part to play in this church. And Paul understands that. And so when he illustrates that in Christ, we who are many form one body, each member belongs to all the others. That's when we get into what it is to be truly gifted. Can we see that, please, Bill? In verse 6, we see we have different gifts according to the grace given us. It is here that we see that Greek word charismata, from the Greek word charisma. You've probably all heard that word before. This refers to grace or gifts denoting extraordinary powers distinguishing certain Christians and enabling them to serve the Church of Christ. The reception of which is due to the power of divine grace operating on their souls by the Holy Spirit. And so these grace gifts, or charismata, are according to God's grace, or charis. Just as Paul pointed out at the beginning, everything we have, everything, is a direct result of the undeserved grace we received from God so that no one can boast, and this is important that Paul gives some specific examples of those charismata. And so the first one in the list, someone with the gift of prophecy, 
It's being aware of the circumstances around them. A person with this gift has the ability to boldly speak the word of God. To proclaim the gospel of Jesus, which is always grounded in holy scriptures and never in contradiction with what is found in the Bible. And so it's spiritual gifts like prophecy that sometimes trip people up. They're saying, well, I don't know about all this. Different Christian traditions have different perspectives on this. But in our tradition here at Red Arrow, we believe that the spiritual gifts did not end with the death of the apostles. We believe that God still can do miraculous healing. We believe that sometimes the Lord gives a person a word that is exactly what needs to be spoken out loud. But the problem is sometimes when people have these spiritual gifts, they, they do some damage. And so kind of the, the good example that I always refer back to is babies playing with power tools. So where's the baby? Where's the baby? <laughs> Welcome to Red Arrow. Would you like your child to play with the circular saw? No? Okay. Of course not. We would never give a young child or even a baby to play with a circular saw. That would be foolish. And yet sometimes people that have been given amazing spiritual gifts lack the maturity and the grounding in Scripture to use it appropriately and they, in effect, hurt themselves and those people around us. But prophecy is not the only charismata that Paul points out. Let's look at them briefly. Service. Those who administer help to people, the needs of people, meet the needs of people, either by collecting or distributing charity. So here at Red Arrow, we have deacons. They're called the Benevolent Team. So it's Claire DeBoer and Sherry Heisinger and Travis Olber. But we have more gifts. We have teaching. Those who impart instruction, instill doctrine to explain or to teach something. We have tons of teachers in our church. Next one. Encouragement, those who can encourage, comfort, admonish, exhort, console, and strengthen those around them. I know we have people with the gift of encouragement. Maria and I often experience encouragement from all of you. Giving, those who can give, they impart, they share, or contribute to the needs of others. People have amazing gifts of giving in this church. Leadership, those who can provide leadership, direction, management, administration over various situations and groups. There's lots of leaders here. Showing mercy. Those who can show kindness, mercy, or concern for someone in serious need. And it doesn't always come out in English, but Paul makes sure to point out that all of these gifts, all of these gifts are used by the Lord for His extraordinary purposes and should be done, not begrudgingly, oh, i got to go to church today to use my gifting. Yuck. No. It's not just on Sundays. It's every day of the week we should wake up with this sense of gratitude using the gifts and talents that the Lord has given us with joy and cheerfulness because it is a great privilege to be gifted. As we think about what it means to be gifted, we think back to the children's message illustration there a little bit. Do I, I mean, again, I, I'm, maybe it's just me, but I think I look just like the professor. Right? It looks just like him. But if you know the story of X-Men, whether on the comic books or in the movies, you know that the professor's attempt was to gather people from all around the world and help those people to discover their gifts and to use those gifts and to use those gifts in order to make the world a better place. How different then is the church that the Lord brings together people with different backgrounds and different giftings, and we want this to be a place where you can discover your gifts, that you can use your gifts, not only for the benefit of our church, but for our communities and for around the world. But in the same way, it would be bad, inappropriate, for a superhero to use their gifts and talents for selfish reasons. It would be wrong for all of us who has been given the gift the Spirit of God and discovering what those gifts look like to just use it for ourselves, just keep it to ourselves and say, no, I'm not going to help anybody out. I'm just going to enjoy this gift that I have. And so, in conclusion, we kind of think about this key application. This morning asks, what difference does all of this make in the way that I live? And so the author points out a few important and helpful hints here. We seek to serve using our gifts to glorify God and helping others. We value and respect the gifts of others as together we serve God's purposes. And finally, we come to see that using our gifts for God gives us a purpose.
bigger than ourselves. And then in closing, the author ends this chapter with this. If you want to gain a better understanding of your own spiritual gifts, look for a number of excellent resources and tools online or in Christian bookstores. Or you can simply ask people to help you discover your gifts. Using the story in this chapter about that of an accident, ask three folks to circle those different roles that they see you playing. Your responsibility is discover and develop God's gifts and then find how each one fits in the world He wants to reach. You have been given a gift and God's plan to use your gift to change the world. Now when we are children, most of us pretend to have or dream about having some sort of superpower. Guilty. I always pretended I was part of the X-Men. <laughs> but the Creator has given you a divine gift. When it is used in and through your unique personality, abilities, and intellect, energized by the Holy Spirit, God will certainly produce supernatural results far above what you can ask for or imagine Him to ever do. And so I invite you, not only in this time, in this day, in this week, but in the next couple weeks and months, you know, again, we have this wonderful document that Maria put together called Role in Relationship. We want to to test out what sort of gifts you have, to get plugged in here at Red Arrow, find a role, develop a relationship, and very quickly you're going to see you're going to find great joy in the gifts that God has given you. But still, the last thing I want to say to you is, so often we understand that we have gifts and, and we enjoy our gifts and we think, well, I'm gifted, but what does that mean? I think for all of us, it means that we are open to whatever God wants us to do. Wherever He wants to send us, whatever He wants us to do with our gifts, we have to be open to where God is sending us. And then, and only then, will we truly discover the power of the gifts that He has given us to bring Him glory. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the amazing gifts in this room. Lord, again, You have blessed our church with a double portion of giftedness. Lord, I, I stand in maze of the wonderful people that You've brought to our church. And Lord, You're still bringing them. And so, Lord, as we think about not only those that you have gathered here, but those that are not yet here, Lord, use the gifts and talents in this room, in this building, in this church, to reach out to our communities, to inspire others, to seek your will for their lives. And when, when they come and when they get enfolded into our, our body that you have put together, Lord, help them to see the gifts that they've given and be open to being used by you in whatever way you have planned we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.